Forget gurus. Forget anyone claiming to be an online business expert without going through the challenges of entrepreneurship themselves. The Real Money, Real Business podcast is here to prove the best insights in online business comes from your fellow online business builders. We dig into stories of entrepreneurs selling their business on the Empire Flippers marketplace so that you can learn how they made their business profitable, how they overcame obstacles, and what lessons they learned in their online journey. If you want to take your business and your knowledge to the next level, you've come to the right podcast. Let's get started. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of the Real Money, Real Business podcast. We record these interviews so potential buyers have more information about the seller and the business to help them make a buying decision. Today, we'll be talking about an Amazon FBA business for sale. Just before we go and speak to the seller, let me give a very brief summary of the business. Today's business is an Amazon FBA and e-commerce business created in July 2018 in the beauty niche. The average monthly revenue for the business is $74,877 and it makes an average of $12,219 per month in net profit. The assets included in the sale are an Amazon Seller Central account with 12 SKUs, a domain and all of the site's contents and files, a trademark, social media accounts, SOPs, and supplier contracts and relationships. Please note that inventory isn't normally included in the listing price and further details can be provided to active buyers. And also note that buyers should have an active VAT number in all of the UK and EU countries where this business has inventory stored before the transfer can finalise. For everyone listening, you can visit empireflippers.com slash marketplace and search for listing 53668 to learn more about the business or you can unlock this listing to start your due diligence if you're interested in purchasing this asset. So that's a very general overview of the business, but let's speak to the sellers. So welcome to the show, Nick, Patrick, how are both of you doing? Hi, I'm Thanks great. for Thanks. having us. Yeah, it's wonderful. I'm doing great too. Yeah, no, it's great to have both of you on. Let's find out a bit about yourselves then. Can you share with me what your backgrounds are in building or running online businesses? I assume I'll start. I'm Nick, 23 years old. So when we started this business back in 2018, obviously we were a little younger. This is actually our first business we founded. We had some projects before we wanted to do because it was always our dream to have a business together as brothers. So when I was 19, the whole idea came up with, with starting with FBA and then, yeah, it developed. And in July 2018, um, our first product went online. That's basically it. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Nick, for your introduction. I'm Patrick, the older brother of both. I'm 25 years old. As Nick mentioned, our deal started in 2017. I myself have a background in IT technologies and did my studies in digital business management. And during that study, basically, we started the FBA business. Yeah, that is great, guys. Thank you so much for sharing your backgrounds. I think that's a wonderful family story there. I think a lot of people, maybe when they reach sort of that age of like 17, 18, they probably couldn't think of or wish for anything more than to be away from their siblings. But for the pair of you, you decided to start a business together, which is a huge endeavor. So tell me then, what was the inspiration behind this business in particular? Why did you start an Amazon FBA business in particular? Basically, to be completely honest, we started doing this business with a test product. Our first product was more like a test product to see if the whole FBA model will work for us. And yeah, we realized pretty soon that it worked really good. So we thought about building a brand around this first product. And yeah, it happened to be quite successful in the past three years. Yeah, no, that's wonderful. So obviously, it's in the beauty niche. I assume that was because you basically just found an opportunity with those products in particular. It wasn't like you had a sort of like a personal interest or anything like that with them. No, we always said to ourselves, we want to do something we can identify with ourselves, which is also a little our passion, I guess. So that's why we chose the beauty industry. We didn't want to, to do a business or a brand in the, let's say, garden niche, because we're just not interested in that. So the beauty niche is well chosen. No, that's great to hear. Our listeners will be wondering, why are you selling the business right now instead of staying with it or growing it? 
running a business needs a lot of enthusiasm and a lot of energy drive, which we had in the past three years. And now we came to a point where we don't have the same energy as we used to have when we started the business. And I think the brand is at a point where it's need a lot of energy put in and a lot of enthusiasm to bring it to the next level. And yeah, we both agreed that we think a different person can do that better than we do. So that's actually the main reason for us to sell the business right now. Gotcha. That makes sense for sure. I guess let's dive a bit deeper into that. What did you learn from building this FBA business and in the beauty niche that you just felt really worked for you? Like were there any sort of strategies or anything like that? We are a FBA brand. So our expertise is on Amazon, how to launch a product on Amazon and then market it towards a customer base and rank your listing as high as possible. So for me, that's my biggest learning. But also about uh, product development, we developed over 12 SKUs with this brand. And with each product, we learned something more and we have great suppliers. We know how to communicate with suppliers, how to develop certain USPs. Yeah, there's a lot to mention, actually. Yeah, makes sense. How about you, Patrick? Nick said uh, a lot of good points. What I would extend here is maybe also in the business aspect, what are important metrics in running an actual business? For example, cash flow or liquidity of cash. I couldn't imagine. I mean, in theory, I knew that it was important as a business owner that cash flow and liquidity is very important. But the past few years, I learned it myself that this metric is like the most important one in running a business, basically, so for all the supply stuff and so on. Yeah. Yeah, gotcha. Makes sense. Was there any software or tools that you found just really helpful as you were growing and scaling the business? I think our number one tool was Sellerboard. I'm not even sure if you guys in the US use this tool. If it's German, I'm not sure. But basically, it's a tool where you track all your numbers. So you see on a daily basis how much profit you did, how big your advertising costs were, product costs and stuff. That was basically our most helpful tool, but we also use tools like Helium 10 to do our product research, market research, keyword research. was all done, actually, in Helium 10. For sure. And I suppose, was there any resources that you also found useful to help you learn more about just Amazon FBA in general? That could have been maybe certain forums or communities or YouTubers, just anything like that. We came to a point in 2019 when we realized that all those YouTube videos or forums, we read through most of them. And then we came up with the idea into joining a mentoring, a mentoring which was a little more of an investment, but it was totally worth it as there were over 2000 FBA sellers and in a community. And then you had those mentors, which are some of the best sellers in Europe which told you all the best strategies on how to make your FBA brand a success. So that was a big step for us when we joined this mentoring, yeah. No, that sounds great. Did you find the mentor or they found you? We found them, yeah. That's great. Definitely mentoring is can be really valuable to have that one-to-one feedback and, and yeah, just advice along the way for sure. So mentoring is definitely, if you can get it, it's definitely a valuable tool, which is great. I just want to switch over to the marketing side of things now. What do both of you do in terms of marketing for the business? Number one thing for marketing is obviously Amazon PPC. So over the last three years, we really developed that skill to be like really good at Amazon PPC because I think for FBA business is the number one advertising thing. We did at the beginning some external traffic like Facebook ads and then lead them to our Amazon listing. But time and people told us that the most profit thing to run are the PPC ads. So that's basically our main thing for the Amazon sales. That sounds great. I think it sounds like in that short space of time, you're able to pick up uh, paid advertising, which is, I think, a lot of FBA sellers' first choice when it comes to advertising and promoting. On a day-to-day or even a weekly basis, can both of you share with me what you do to maintain the business? My side is basically the financial and supply chain side. So to maintain the business, it's crucial for the supply chain, it's very important to monitor all the stock assets that, that we have and also do forecasts on a regular basis 
like on a weekly basis. I guess that's the most important thing for the supply chain. And um, financial side is mostly on the beginning of the month, like track the income of the Amazon sales, do all the tax related stuff, do all the accounting stuff and so on. Yeah, that's what my side of the business is. It takes about, I'd say, 10 hours a week, maybe, of work. Yeah, and how about you, Nick? I'm more on the marketing and and sales side, so I do the monitoring of our PPC campaigns, um, which is probably the biggest part. So we have 12 SKUs, so we do each SKU, we optimize each three to four weeks. That there's a big optimization then, and also the monitoring of the reviews. We do track all the metrics and see where we can increase, like for example, the conversion rate, the click-through rate, and we do split testings, um, price testing. That's the most time I invest in. So probably, I say in total, with 15 hours, you can maintain the business. 15 hours per week, you can maintain the business easily. For sure, yeah. That's great to hear. It sounds like both of you have really found your niches in terms of the responsibilities and you managed to segment that out between both of you. If someone was you know, interested in buying this business, what would you say are some of the skills or requirements they should be familiar with in case they weren't familiar with FBA as a business model or even the beauty niche? We are FBA business, so the, the main skill somebody should have is probably to be familiar with the whole Amazon platform, how to run PPC ads, how to launch a new product, how to optimize listings, the general understanding of the whole Amazon platform. But also it's really useful to have more knowledge in general e-commerce, like running for Shopify stores or how to get more traffic to the Shopify store. And as Patrick said, the whole supply chain side is obviously a really important part of the whole business. Sure. Patrick, do you have anything you'd like to add to that? No, I'm good. You mentioned everything. Okay. If both of you stayed with the business, what would some of the growth opportunities be? How would you try to expand it? One project, which is definitely the next thing for this business, would be to expand into new marketplaces in Europe. Right now, we're only selling on Germany, especially on the UK, and we saw there's a lot of potential with our products. So that's one big thing, but also on the product side, to just expand the product ranges. Yeah, there's still a lot of products with great potential on Amazon, but also on Shopify, which can, and in our opinions, needed to be added. So that's the other thing. And then obviously, what we're always doing, just optimizing existing products. So reading through our customer feedback, the reviews on Amazon, and just um, optimizing the products and make it the best offer on Amazon. That's the driver for a long time success, in our opinions. Yeah, for sure. How about you, Patrick? Anything else you think might be potential opportunities? No, I think Nick did a great job here. It's basically the three areas we see the most potential to grow. So expanding in other markets, extending the product lines that we have. Our brand is split into three particular lines and you can expand the lines with a lot of product, basically. And as he also mentioned, uh, grow the Shopify store. I mean, we see a lot of potential in, in these three areas. Yeah, For sure. What would you say are some of the biggest risks with this business that a buyer should be aware of? Yeah, for me, probably that the beauty industry has grown or is still growing in the e-commerce side. So there's always competitors joining into the market. So I be well aware of that. And as I said, always try to optimize and make the best product on the market. And then I think you'll be able to run this business successful and grow it even more. As we both said, there's still a lot of potential also, um, not only on Amazon, but also on Shopify to bring the whole brand to a, to a next level to make it a well-established lifestyle brand in Europe or maybe even the US. Yeah, I think we created a good foundation to do so. Great. Okay. That's good to hear. Last few questions then from me, guys. How much support are you offering buyers? We're open to, to offer a lot of support, like the support that is needed, that the buyer runs the business or can run the business or is able to run the business as we do. I don't think that we say we limit our hours to the buyer, right, Nick? 
we're absolutely open and we want the future owner of our brand um, to be able to run the business as, as best as we would run it. So we would be happy to help run this business and we don't limit it to any hours. Great to hear. Are you willing to commit to a non-compete? Yes, of course. Yeah. And are you open to negotiating something like an earnout? Yeah, I mean, we're definitely open to it, but as probably every seller of a business, we prefer cash up front, but we're definitely open to discuss any possibilities there. Great. Okay. Well, last question really from me, guys. If you put yourself in the shoes of a buyer, why would you say that this is a business worth buying? As I said, we see a lot of potential, especially in the three areas we mentioned, expanding to new markets, expanding the product lines, but also our Shopify store. So we think the brand we have right now has not reached its full potential or not at all. Actually, as I said, the main reason for selling the business is that we cannot bring up the energy needed to reach that potential. So, yeah, I think it's a great opportunity to buy this business mm -hmm. because there's still a lot of potential in that industry, especially because it's growing a lot. Yeah, this podcast can see our brand, obviously, but if they could, I mean, it's all set to skyrocket this brand. We did a great job in setting the basis with static revenue. And yeah, as Nick said, they are also buying the potential this brand has in the future. Yeah. That's great to hear, guys. That definitely makes sense. Is there anything that you'd like to share that you think I might have missed? No, for me, it's all fine. All good. Yeah, same here. Great. Well, Nick, Patrick, it's been a pleasure having you on today's podcast. And I really hope to see your FBA business get picked up by the right buyer in the near future. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you, Vinny, for having us. All right, everyone. Thanks for listening. To learn more and see if this listing has already been sold, head over to empireflippers.com slash marketplace and search for listing 53668. If you're watching this on YouTube, click the link in the description to go straight to the listing. And once you've unlocked the listing, you'll be given everything you need to know about the business. So until next time, enjoy your digital journey.